you already said that you kind of had a roadmap for the character early on, but I imagine there are a lot of specific beats and scenes within that that you didn't know about. So was there any particular scene that you learned about just before you shot it that kind of threw you for a loop where you needed to stop and I guess reprocess what you thought this character was? Yeah, well, there were, there were kind of on both ends, there are also scenes that disappear in the making of the show. And so, you know, you're kind of, you might map out something and then you hear that actually that episode's been condensed or that scene's moved earlier or later. And so you're kind of constantly recalibrating accordingly. Um, but I had a, for, in terms of like the, the last two episodes, I knew words like unhinged and um, metaphysical is what Larry Trilling, you know, our latter two uh, he directed the last two episodes he would say things like that and so it kind of gears you up to be operating in that zone but I I had no idea um the kind of dune moment when she's talking to herself in the mirror um things like that were a really cool surprise because I felt you know it's it's a sad thing to admit but often you do get sold something and it doesn't work out that way so it was really cool that Brian and Zev had kept their word and they weren't joking, you know, she, if it's the making of a cult leader, if it's the making of sort of a sociopath, like they lay down the land for that to happen. Oh, I have so many follow-up questions. I guess first, can you give us an example of something that was cut, but was important to the character in a way that we could, like, even though that scene isn't in the show, we could kind of still feel it like bubbling under the surface of the scenes that did make it into the final product? Yeah, I think there was, um, there was a scene with Tamara and myself that didn't make it in. And I remember being really bummed out about that because I wanted to do a scene with Tamara. Um, but also because our characters juxtaposed, you, it was just so antithetical. And I felt that would have been really interesting um, to have that. But then at the same time, you have to investigate, is that scene really relevant? What's it offering to the story, to each character's arc? Um, and ultimately it can actually do a disservice. It might give away too much um, or something like that. So it leaves open the opportunity to maybe do that another time. I feel like I'm starting to tiptoe into like vivarium-like questions now where it's like I'm trying to explain things away and maybe they shouldn't be. But for you, what was the biggest catalyst for change in Autumn? Because so much happens to her. Was it like the instant she stepped on the property, was it hearing about what happened to Royal in the hole or uh, her losing her medication? There's just, there's so many things. So of everything that happened to her, what sparked the biggest change for you? Well, I think that, you know, there's something very dangerous about um, a personality type like Autumn. So I think curiosity is one of humanity's greatest sort of uh, traits. And it's, you know, um, it's hugely important to me in every walk of life. But I think like anything, it's got an edge to it and someone can become so rapacious with their need to know everything and therefore like own everything, own knowledge. And that's the making of a sociopath. So I think that um, Autumn's relationship with death is also something to consider and what if you didn't believe in death? What if you um, had nothing left to lose? What kind of a person do you become? And how does that affect your sort of um, relationships with other people and just a very warped kind of concept of, um, of life and death and loss and gain and all of that. So I think as a story rumbles along she just alienates herself more and more. Um, and I think that we've seen people like that in politics and, you know, like all over, who sort of just start to, um, yeah, there's a sociopathic element to it. A specific question. I think this happens in, in episode six, where like she says with such conviction, to, I think it's to Royal, I'm going to help people. At that moment in her mind, like, what is her plan to help people? How does she intend to do that? And what effect does she want to have on people around her? I think, again, it's, uh, they say help is kind of a very insidious cousin of control, don't they? That's something that people 
have spoken about. And I think it probably runs in that family. There's this notion that um, there is some sort of divine choice in you as a person, that you'll be the one to carry out this task. And um, and you look for the signs and the signs confirm this. And, you know, I think she's deep in that hole um, when it comes to this idea of like, I can help people. It's sort of, what is help to you, Autumn? <laughs> To kind of like flip all this around, because I I feel like it can be, you know, fairly easy to point a finger and say and say she's just a flat out villain. But I was reading an interview that that Brian had given and, you know, he was saying that the whole took people where they needed to go. So is there any part of you that thinks that, you know, some of her roadmap is is, I guess, being designed for the better, like putting putting her on a better path, even though it descends into darkness to such an extent? You mean in the sense of like the like how it's uh, tied up at the end of the season? Yeah, kind of. It's yeah, yeah. I guess that's kind of what I'm getting at. And it's like you know he's talking about specifically where someone goes when they jump into the hole, but I'm kind of talking about you know like literally everything associated with the hole and how it can nudge people in certain directions. Yeah. Well, I think what's cool about it, and I myself don't know. Um, and didn't know when we were shooting it, which I think is for the best because it means that you're sort of, um, it, it keeps it ambiguous. But I sense that there's enough of a, you know, especially with our show, you can make all kinds of parallels. I think obviously there are a lot of biblical parallels you can make. So sort of what, what happens to the fallen person? You know, is there a redemption in order? Or is there sort of a deeper, you know, descent um, and I think Autumn has the capacity to kind of probably go either way. Um, and of course, with the reveal at the end of the show and, and things like that, all of that, all of that kind of, um, it's such a difficult thing to talk about, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it like is. you, could, you could say anything you want, though. We are in spoiler territory. Talk freely. This Don't worry like, about it. Yeah, Everyone has seen everything at this point if they're watching this video. Okay, okay, great. I think by the, I so like droned into you, like, don't mention that thing. Um, <laughs> I, I messed up the other day on a panel because I was like, well, Autumn's so alien because, I mean, she's not a alien. I mean, she might be an alien. I just think she's... <laughs> but um, yeah, there's something uh, unknown about that too, sort of which, which way she'll go morally. At the very end, does she know her truth? Does she know who she is or is that the type of thing that she's going to wake up and realize if she's even told to begin with? I, you know, again, I'll sort of say like, I'm, I'm uncertain, but I suspect that there is such a deep, um, there's a very deep sense of belonging um, that she feels in the best parts of her. It's, I don't, I don't think she's all bad, but um, I do feel that there is a real, there's an understanding that she's, She's in a place she once knew very, very well. Um, and I think we could all kind of imagine that if we think back to our, whether they were good or bad, but our childhoods or, or places where we, we remember once being happy or whatever that is. I think there's a, um, there's a, she's very aware of that like cosmic connection. 